Obviously, very fast-growing category. We have these numbers that almond milk growing 6% a year since 2015. Oat milk growing much faster off a much lower base as you know, traditional milk declines in market share. Just how big can the category get? You're obviously going to put this new money to work and expanding. What are your assumptions for how big this gets? Hey, Mike. Great to be with you guys this morning. Um, well, it, it, we think it's a, a bit bigger space than people think, and we're really excited to look at it, really uh, not so much as a bunch of problems to be solved, but there's an opportunity space that's larger than the meat protein substitute way that people have been looking about plants so far. So Calafia looks at it as um, the broad spectrum of the whole, what was called the dairy case, is now something that we can look at as really tasty, delicious plant substitutes across the board with everything from fluid milk to creams, to whip, whips, cheeses, everything that you can think of. And dairy is pervasive throughout <clears throat> not only all the meals, but all the day parts and as an ingredient. So while, you know, some people might have a burger a few times a week, really there's some kind of dairy in almost everything that we eat throughout the day. So we think it's been a little underlooked at by the markets. Now, how, how much brand power do you think there is in this area? We don't necessarily think of traditional dairy uh, in every respect, especially milk, as necessarily being uh, that powerful in terms of uh, brand uptake. Obviously, a lot of entrance in the plant-based uh, milk area as well. So uh, how do you compete uh, for, for shelf space and how do you, uh, I guess, keep customers' loyalty? Yeah. Well, that's just it, Mike. I mean, we got started uh, as a small company, so we had to use some disruptive techniques to get in there. And so what you had, you know, eight, ten years ago before we got started was a wall of um, half-gallon milk containers uh, all looked the same. The industry had commodified itself, and a lot of the woes of the dairy industry today um, are really related somehow to a lack of innovation that, that just didn't happen during that period. So we came along with a, a great brand named after the state of California. So Califia Farms is um, named after the goddess that was the original inspiration for, for the whole state. And then we put it in a curvy bottle and just disrupted visually that space. So we used a little bit of entrepreneurial technique to shake up the game, focused on innovation, brought a lot of flavors, brought in different commodity streams. So we started creating some excitement where before it was just thought of as just kind of a health play or lactose intolerance, kind of technical issues. And the dairy industry had a tendency to really look at things in percentages, 2%, 0%, you know, half fat, no fat, you know, and that's not really what turns the consumer on. Greg, I wonder why you think uh, legacy dairy players didn't see this sort of revolution in millennial taste coming, uh, given all their data, given all their history, uh, why to some it still came as such a surprise. Well, my, you know, Mike, I think it's a more fundamental problem than just the dairy industry guys or whatever, because underneath it all, it's more the millennials. And I, I, I think to headline it that way is, is the access point, because in a way, we've all been millennialized to, to some extent. And a lot of our customer base and us being a brand driven company, we've got to know what's going on in the hearts and minds of the consumers. So. What we see is the millennial fact has spread to their parents. So you've got baby boomers shifting, and then you've got the Gen Zennials or, you know, pre-millennials also being even more emphatic about these changes. And it's not just for health, it's for planetary health. And I think underneath that, that's where the food system has to change as a whole. So what, what we think is, you know, of crisis and climate change and all these things that, you know, promote the ideas of higher costs, we're looking at it as really this is, this is a giant opportunity to clean up part of the food system, clean up the diet, get in step with what the consumer really wants, and, and, and create some financial opportunity for investment.